are the best you the world will see. Come along now and share you with me. Let's learn something new and share feelings too. Cause these are the things to do to be the best you. Hello, Auntie Lena. What are you looking at? Oh, hello, friends, and hello, Possum. I'm admiring the honey from my friend, Mr. Robin's beehive. <gasps> bees? Oh, well, yes, Possum, bees. Ooh. But why that reaction? Bee stings. Isn't your friend afraid of getting stung by, by bees? Oh, well, Mr. Robin, he wears a very special hat and clothes to protect him from stings. He loves his bees because they are good friends to the earth and help us in so many ways. Well, they do? But I thought bees just made a lot of buzzing sounds like this. <laughs> Oh, and I just love that buzzing noise. <laughs> I like how the zzz tickles my nose. <laughs> You're silly, Auntie Lena. I sure am. But like I said, bees help us in so many ways. Flowers make a kind of dust or a tiny grain called pollen. When a bee buzzes into a flower, the pollen sticks to the bee's legs, and then the bee buzzes to another flower, and the pollen rubs off their legs and mixes with other pollen. All that rubbing around and mixing is called pollination. Oh, what does pollination do? Pollination helps plants to make seeds so that the earth can have even more flowers, fruits, and vegetables. Oh, and what else do bees do? Bees also drink a type of juice that flowers make that's called nectar. This nectar helps make honey. Wow, honey comes from bees? Does, does that mean that, that peanut butter comes from spiders? No, but I can see how you might think that, Possum. Actually, would you like to learn how bees make honey? <gasps> yes! Well, I have a video of my visit to Mr. Robin's bee farm that we can watch. <gasps> can we watch it right now, Auntie Lena? Please, please! <laughs> yes, we can. Oh, goody! Hi, Mr. Robin! Hello, Auntie Lena. Thanks so much for inviting me to the bee farm today. This is beautiful. I love all the flowers. Do the bees like the flowers? The bees love the flowers. They've got great nectar and it helps them create the honey that you and I get to enjoy. Oh, that sounds great. Can we actually go visit the bees? We definitely can. All right, and what about what we're gonna wear? We're gonna wear this special jacket and protective equipment just in case the bees wanna get too close. Wow, look at all the bees. So Mr. Robin, tell me, how do bees make honey? So the bees come in and collect nectar from all the flowers in the neighborhood, and they bring it into their hive, and they put it in these little wooden slots for us. They're able to go and eat the honey in there, but we can also take some for ourselves. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is what a hive, a bee honey hive looks like. It sure is. All right, wow. here we go. It's gonna be a lot of bees. And since I can't be a good helper, I'm gonna stay out of your way. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, it's really heavy, Auntie Lena. Wow, look at that. Is that honey? It sure is. That it, looks really different than what I see at home in my jars. It may not look exactly like what you have at home, but inside every little hole there is a little bit of honey. Mr. Robin, how do you get the honey out of the holes? So I have a special machine at home that can actually spin these so fast that the honey comes out of the circles and goes into a little tube and then I put it all into jars. How do you take care of all of these bees? So we do a lot to make sure that they're getting as much honey and nectar as they can. But sometimes I have to take some honey out to give them more room. 
but when I take more honey out, I, I want to make sure that we leave enough for the bees as well. Oh, so the bees like the honey for themselves too, huh? Oh, they love it. <laughs> but they make so much that they like to share it with me especially. What's the waggle dance that bees do? So the waggle dance is something really fun that bees like to do. When they find some good flowers with a lot of nectar, they want to come back to the hive and tell all their friends. But instead of you and how you and I talk to each other about, you know, where our favorite pizza place is, they just go in and then they dance in the direction that the, the flowers are. So they like wiggle their behind? Yeah, it's like, hey, Auntie Lena, I found some beautiful flowers. They're right over here. Oh, here I come. Well, oh, all right. <laughs> That's a fun bee fact. Isn't it? <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Robin. This was a lot of fun seeing the bees make honey and knowing you're taking such good care of our friends. Thank you. Thanks for coming down, Auntie Lena. Oh, Auntie Lena, thank you for showing me that video. I liked seeing the beehives. Those bees sure make a lot of honey. Yes, they do. And honey is used for so many things, from crafts to cooking. I like to put a little honey in my tea and on my toast. It sweetens everything with a kiss of sunshine. Oh, it's amazing that something as, as tiny as a bee can make something as sweet as honey. You got that right, Possum. Tiny bees do a lot of big work. Can can we make a snack with honey, Auntie Lena? Oh, seeing all that honey made me hungry. <laughs> That's a fantastic idea. Let's learn a new recipe with our friends. Hi. We're at Rainier Beach Urban Farms Wetland. My name is Miss Michelle, and this is my daughter. Isabella. And we're here today to make a fun snack with you. We are gonna make nut-free, grain-free. Cereal bars. Cereal bars. So. The th our ingredients today are Cheerios, cranberries, sunflower seeds, sun butter, and honey. Honey, that is going to be our special ingredient. What is honey made from, Isabella? Bees. Who makes honey? Bees, <laughs> yeah. Bees make honey. Isabella, do you know how many bees are in the world? There's over 20,000 kinds of bees in the world. That's right. There's over 20,000 species of bees in the world. So that's going to be our special ingredient today. So let's get started. We're going to first take our um, dry ingredients and put them together. And I want to point out that we had craisins, but you can use any dried um, berry. You can use blueberries or even probably raisins. And to make it nut-free, we substituted peanut butter and did sunflower butter. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the bowl. And we're gonna put cranberries in the bowl. And then we're gonna put sunflower seeds. All right, now we're gonna mix it all together. Will you do that for us? Yes, that I all will. mix great. Do you know that some people are afraid of bees? I'm afraid of bees. Yep, some people are afraid of bees, and usually it's because they've been stung by the bee or they know someone who's been stung by the bee. But bees, they're not really out to get us. When they sting us, they're there doing it because they want to protect themselves. They're a little bit afraid that we're going to hurt them, and so that's why they sting. So they're just afraid of us? They're a little bit afraid of us, that's right. That's why they sting. All right, so we've got that all mixed up. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our sun butter and our special ingredient, our honey made from bees, into this pot and we're gonna cook it. So we are gonna add 2 thirds cup of honey. And it should, it, the heat should be on medium. So it's not too hot. You don't wanna cook it too hot or too fast. And we're going to add two-thirds of a cup of sun, sun butter. butter. That's right. And remember to have an adult around so you don't get burnt. That's right. So we're going to stir this for about 30 to 60 seconds, just until it's nice and silky and smooth. Mm, that looks sweet. It does. Then we're going to take it off the heat and let it sit for three to five minutes. And now we're gonna add our honey and sun butter mix to our um, cereal mix. That looks good. It does look good. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, now we're gonna mix it up and make sure we get all of the, all of it coated. Yeah. Do you know why bees are important? 
Well, I think they're important because they pollinate the fruits and vegetables we eat. That's right. And the beautiful flowers, the sunflowers and stuff, that's what bees do. They pollinate those so that we can have them. So without bees, we wouldn't have any of those things. And I would be really very sad. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into our pan and then we're gonna press it down firmly. Before we put our mixture in there, we gotta spray our pan. Lightly the corners, we want all those spaces. All right, thanks. Okay. That looks right. good. It does look good. I can't wait to try these. Me too. Start pressing. You know what? I'm gonna spray some oil on my hands and I'll work with you. We'll do it together. How about that? Okay. Let's do that. It's still right. a little sticky, it's but. It's still a little sticky, but it's. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Well, it looks like this is nice and firmly packed in there. Yes. It so does. the next thing we will do is we will cover it and put it in the refrigerator for a few hours. All right. So our nut-free, gluten-free cereal snack bars were in the refrigerator. They cooled for a while, for a few hours, and now we have the snack bars here to taste. Mmm, that's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. That's that really is good. very, very good. Mm -hmm. So how did you like working together to make these nut-free cereal bars? I think it was really, really fun. It was really fun. So work, we worked together to make something great, just like bees work together to produce honey. Working together brings out good things sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah? Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, honey is so yummy. I agree, Possum. It is. So, Auntie Lena, you said that bees do their pollinating by going to all kinds of different flowers? Mm-hmm. Well, I was wondering, what kind of flowers do bees like? Well, I know a book called Bees, Bees by Katherine Pryor. The little girl in the story has the same question. She also wonders about the kind of flowers that bees like to collect pollen from. Let's listen with our friends. Hi everybody, we are here at the Woodland Park Zoo here in Seattle and we are going to talk about bees, right Lewis? Yay! Right, so in this book called Bees, Bees by Katherine Pryor, it's illustrated by Ellie Peterson, the character in this book is going to talk to us about how important it is to take care of bees, okay? Okay. Okay, good. Beatrix heard a humming as she walked through the park on her way home from school. She followed the sound to a hollow oak tree. A cloud of wild bumblebees flew in and out of a hidden beehive like it was the world's busiest airport. <laughs> <laughs> Bee crept closer. The bees flew zigzags and crazy eights and they hovered and dove. They zipped out fast but flew home slowly. Their tiny bodies weighed down with pollen and nectar. We know what nectar is, right? Yeah, because I know how to make nectar. That's like sugar and water. Very good, very good. So Bee visited the hive every day. She watched the bees flit from flower to flower, buzzing with happiness as they collected food for their families. Bzz, bzz. Then one day, the tree was silent. A lonely butterfly circled the oak tree looking for its friends. Its friends were gone. The next day at school, Bee told her teacher what happened. Where did my bees go, she asked. I don't know, her teacher sighed. Sometimes bees just disappear. Mm -hmm. Bee didn't like that one bit. How could a whole hive disappear? Mm -hmm. The park was quiet as she walked home. Bee looked towards the oak tree, but even the butterfly was gone. Then Bee noticed something else. The flowers around the oak tree had been cut down. Beatrix knew that bees like flowers. It's how they get all of their food. The next time Bee's class went to the library, Bee rushed for the librarian. What type of flowers do bees like? I don't know, the librarian said. Let's find out. Bee read everything she could about bees. She learned that they liked to eat pollen and nectar from lots of different flowers and that they needed lots of open space to find them. Bee also learned that bees are a type of pollinator, mm -hmm. which means that they carry pollen from flower to where? To flower. Yeah. 
flower to flower. Without bees, blueberry, raspberry, and pumpkin plants would not be able to turn their flowers into fruit. There would be no more apples or almonds or avocados. Without bees, some of Beatrix's favorite foods would disappear. Bee began to make a plan. In the early wet days of spring, Bee planted wildflower seeds around the base of her tree. She planted mint and clover and sunflowers. The seedlings began to sprout. The flowers began to bloom. But the tree stayed silent. Hmm. Oh, no. What's I missed, happening? I, I don't know. Let's figure it out, okay? Jeez, okay. So Bee did her science fair project on bees. She handed out wildflower seeds to everyone at school and asked them to help feed the bees. All over the neighborhood, their seedlings sprouted. Their flowers bloomed. But the tree, no, it, went silent. it was silent. Beatrix began to lose hope. She sat by her tree and cried sad tears at the thought of losing her bees forever. Then she heard it. Bing. A single bumblebee buzzed past, landing on one of the sunflowers. Then, look at that, she saw More. another. Yes, and another. Bees flew out of a nest in the ground near the hollow oak tree. They hovered and dove. They flew zigzags and crazy eights. Yep, yeah, they zipped out to find pollen and nectar. They flew home slow and fat <laughs> to feed their family. Bees, bees were back. How'd you like the story? I like it. I did too. We, we learned a little bit about bees, didn't we? Well, thank you so much for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, I'm glad that I'm not a bee. <laughs> I'd get so tired doing all that buzzing around, collecting pollen and making honey. Whoa! <laughs> You're right, Possum. Honey makers are busy bees. Mm, Auntie Lena. Yes, Possum? Well, there is one thing in the story today that, that I don't understand. And what's that? Is the Earth running out of bees? Well, the bee population is going down. Some people, like myself, are afraid that honey bees are going to eventually be endangered. Do you know what endangered means? Um, does it mean they're in danger? Yes, Possum, it does. Endangered means something might go away and never come back again. <gasps> oh no! Well, what can we do to help? Let's go to the Wing Luke Museum. We can learn from the illustrator of today's story, Miss Ellie, some of the ways that we can help keep bees buzzing. Hi friends, my name is Ellie Peterson and today I'm here at the Wing Luke Asian Art Museum. Now I'm the illustrator of this book, These Bees. And being the illustrator means that I drew and painted all of the pictures inside this book. Now, while I was doing those illustrations, I learned a lot about bees. Like, where do bees get their food? From flowers, that's right. And why are bees so important to us? Well, because they pollinate flowers. And then those plants can make food that we love to eat, food like cherries and blueberries and strawberries, avocados, pumpkins. One last question. How can we help bees? If you said planting flowers, you are exactly correct. So today, I'm going to show you a project that you can do using supplies that you have at home, probably, to help bees. We're going to make a little bee buffet, these little planter pots where you can plant wildflowers. Here's what you're going to need. Just a paper egg carton, like this. Some safe scissors. A paintbrush or two. And some paints, these are tempera paints. You're gonna want a container of water to wash your brushes. Some paper towels for any messes you might make, and I'm definitely messy. You're gonna want some potting soil and a little wildflower seed packet. 
Okay, here's the first thing that you're going to do. You are going to cut the lid off of your egg carton, just like this. Now, don't get rid of that lid because we're gonna use that for something else later. So just set that aside. And then this little flat part, you're gonna cut that off too. And we don't need that. So you can recycle that or find something fun to do with that. I'm just gonna get rid of that. Okay, now we're going to cut the bottom of the egg carton into four cup sections. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to start cutting right here in this part. And if it's a little hard, sometimes what I do is I kind of fold it and tear it a little bit and that's even easier. Now when your four cup section is ready, then you're ready to paint. So you're gonna turn it upside down and that little mountain actually makes it really easy to hold it upside down. It's a nice little holder for your hand. So I'll turn it upside down and I'm gonna paint the outside of the cups any colors that I wanna paint it. And we don't wanna paint the inside of the cups because that's where the soil's gonna go. So we're gonna stick to the outside. And I think I'm gonna paint mine to look like a bee, okay? So I'm gonna get my brush wet and use my yellow temper paint here and then just start going all the way around the cups. Oh, I'm making a mess. I told you guys I was messy. I'm already getting paint everywhere. That's okay. That's what makes it really fun. You know, bees are not just yellow. We actually have a lot of different colors of bees here in the Pacific Northwest. We have green metallic bees. We have ones that are gray and black and white. We have red bees and blue bees. I'm gonna make this look like a honeybee or a bumblebee. And those are yellow and black. So I'm gonna need my black stripes. So get another brush, or you can just wash the brush that you were using before and start getting some black. And I'm gonna give this a nice black stripe all the way around like that. When it's dry, we are ready to start planting. So here we go. Remember that lid that I said to hang on to? I hope you still have it. We're gonna use it now. This is gonna be the tray for our planters. So inside of our tray, we're gonna put two just folded paper towels. So I'm gonna fold these in half lengthwise or hot dog style, as you may have heard, and then line my tray just like that, okay? And now I'm ready to fill my little planters with soil. So I'm gonna put these two planters right here inside and I'm gonna get a scoop of some all-purpose potting soil and just start filling those. Oh goodness, I told you I was messy. That's okay. And now we're gonna put the seeds in there. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. It's like you're putting sprinkles on a cake. And then we're ready to water it. So I'm gonna use my spray bottle to spray it down with some water like that. You see that? And that's it. In no time, you're gonna have some wildflowers that bees love. Thanks friends for being here with me and thank you for making the world a better place to be a bee. It's time for Movement Minute. Hi friends, I'm Coach Jamila and welcome to Movement Minute. Today, we're gonna go over jumping jacks. So let's start with our feet together, standing at attention, hands right by your side, and we're gonna jump our feet out and reach up to the top, up and down. Try and reach those hands together all the way at the top. Keep breathing, reaching up. If this is a little bit too tough, we can also step out to the side, but keep reaching those arms straight up and down. Good job. Keep moving. You got this. Keep stepping or let's go back to the jump. There we go. And we're gonna finish up. Whew. Great job, friends. I'll see you next time. Possum. Do you think Mama Possum will help you and your friends to plant some flowers? Mm-hmm. Mama Possum loves to garden. Oh, I know she'll be happy to help us. 
I can't wait to get started. That's great. And you know what, Possum? You sure are the bee's knees. Mm -hmm. But I'm the bee's knees? Uh, how can I be a knee on a bee? It's an old saying that means you are really special to me. Oh, well, then you're the bee's knees too, Auntie Lena. Thank you, Possum. And friends, thank you for being our bee's knees and taking time to look, listen, and learn with us today. Remember, you're the best you that the world will ever see. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Stay tuned after the credits for Auntie Lena's parent tip. Today's episode focuses on bees, but really the message is much bigger. It's about introducing children to things that they may not understand or may make them worry about the future. In today's episode, Auntie Lena and Possum talk about the future of bees, how they might go away and never come back, extinction. Adults caring about how children express their worries and fears is a skill that helps children recognize their range of their feelings. Tune into what's on your child's mind. Keep the conversation going. Talk through your child's fears and anxieties together. Make sure your child knows that they can trust you to be there for them, to answer their questions, give loving reassurances and offer steps that they take to feel more in control. And maybe you'll plant a few flowers along the way. After all, our children really are the bee's knees. <laughs>